So good afternoon, I'm Chevy Devaney, the Director of Alumni and Alumni Relations here at the colleges. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a William Smith alum, class of 1995. I'm also married to a Hobart alum, some of you on the call might be as well. Um, and I have two children at the colleges, a uh, junior or rising senior at this point and a rising sophomore. Um, it is my honor to host today's session that explores the incredible opportunity that we have as alums to travel, the faculty expert to different countries. And when I called Jack, he immediately said yes, which makes him one of my most favorite, which I think he already knew professors here at the colleges um, already. <laughs> so, so thank you for joining us once again. Um, and like I said earlier, so that everyone can hear, unless you are asking a question, at which point we will let you know when to unmute your mic, um, please mute your microphones once you've done, um, done so. And you can also use the chat feature to send in your questions to our panelists. We will try to get through every question asked today within the hour, um, but this already looks like a rambunctious group, so I'm thinking, We'll probably have more questions than we can answer in the hour. If we can't answer them within that hour, we'll try to find a way to answer those after, right? We'll probably send them all to Jack. Jack, good? Okay. Jack is muted, so I'm going to unmute him. No. Um, first is Professor of Sociology. I'm just going to introduce our panelists real quick. Jack Harris. Jack teaches a range of internationally oriented courses in sociology, often focusing on Vietnam. His research focuses primarily on men and masculinity in Vietnam and the experience of Vietnamese as they go through massive economic and social change. He has led two study abroad trips to Vietnam, including one of the very first ever to the country. In addition, he's led four faculty trips and three alumni trips to Vietnam. He holds a BA from Tulane University and an MA and PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. Accompanying Jack on many of these abroad experiences is his beautiful wife, Deb. You can see her um, as well on the screen. And Deb is a William Smith alum from the class of 73. Most recently, Deb and Jack led a semester-long program for students to Ireland in the fall of 2019 and an alumni trip to Calabria and Sicily in the fall of 2018. And finally, Alan Levine Opel from the class of 1960 and Michael Opel from the class of 1959. The Opels accompanied Jack and Deb on an alum excursion to Vietnam in 2017, and more recently to Calabria in Italy, and are very generous supporters of the Entrepreneurial Studies Program here at the colleges. I'd also like to say that I believe there are many of you also accompanied Jack on uh, his trips, and we're very excited that you were able to join us today. So with that, I'll turn this over to Jack and enjoy the conversation today. Thank you, thank you, Chevy. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, this is a this is a very very happy moment for Deb and myself uh, to see so many people um, who have traveled with us uh, back to 2006. Where's Ruth Hyde? You know, wave uh, who traveled back in 2006. Do Einstein traveling back in 2006. Um, several students. Marissa just came back from Vietnam. I think last year. Uh, Sarah Shuttle went with a faculty person to Vietnam. Uh, Jim. Uh, uh, Jim Bryan, who uh, who isn't at Hobart and William Smith, but traveled with us, and so it's nice to see you. I mean, I could name so many of you. It's such a delight to see um, um, you on this on this call. This is kind of like reunion, uh, so it's it's really kind of strange. The other thing is, is I do want to mention that uh, Mark Jones and Lenine Cow are on. Uh, Mark, I think, has led the program three times. And uh, Lanang, uh, Lana has, is essentially our coordinator of, of all of our internships and all of our arrangements and so on and so forth in country. So um, you've got a lot of expertise on, um, and it's good to see just so many student friends and uh, uh, so many people that we've traveled with. Anyway, um, I, I really want to have an opportunity for you all to talk about your experiences because we've had, Deb and I have led three alumni trips, one in 2006, one in 2012 and one in 2017. And uh, Vietnam has really changed a lot. I mean, we've been going to Vietnam since, I've been going to Vietnam with Deb since 1994. Uh, when we first went on semester at sea, the Opels uh, went uh, back, I think, what, you said 20 years ago uh, yeah. to Vietnam. So we've seen a lot of changes in Vietnam. Uh, and 
questions. I'm, I'm eager to, uh, to hear from you all, kind of compare notes on, uh, on the Vietnam that you've experienced. And again, some more recently uh, and some less, uh, less recently. So uh, what I thought we would do is, uh, you know, we prepared some slides just kind of for talking points. And so what I'm gonna do is share my screen. Um, and um, again, a lot of these are very, very happy memories uh, that we have. Oh, there we go. So uh, can you see that? Yes, I need to kind of, Carol's, Carol, yeah, Chevy, okay, good, very good. So um, I thought we'd start with, with the reality that we've got a society that is really, really very, very old. And um, that it's, it's, it's just extraordinary in, in its complexity. And this particular photo um, uh, is over at the Temple of Literature. Uh, and behind uh, this, this temple of literature is devoted to Confucian scholarship. Uh, and this is where the quote unquote uh, PhDs, if you will, the doctors got their degrees. Um, and so I thought I would start with, with something that was really, really ancient and then uh, turn to just the trip itself. The 2017 trip uh, started in Hanoi I, I always start the trips in Hanoi um, because I believe that's really reflects the history of Vietnam and the Vietnamese. Um, and by that, I mean that Vietnam as a country was really only that northern part for a long, long time and didn't absorb the middle part of the country till the 1400s and didn't absorb the bottom part of the country really un until, um, oh, I think about the 16, 1700s. So what we've got is a, a society that's got these three very, very distinct regions. And so to kind of appreciate the history, I always start in Hanoi. Uh, Hanoi itself is arrogant insofar that they think that they are the real Vietnamese and speak the real Vietnamese language. Um, and I think it's a very, very good way to be introduced um, to the society. Um, sometimes our, our students start, we all, we all start in Saigon with a three week Vietnamese language program. And then what I do with the students is that we, f we fly up to Hanoi and then take a two week trip south at the very, very end. And I think that's because um, I do it that way because I think the students are more prepared to understand the rest of the country. Nevertheless, in the 2017 trip, we also went to Mai Chau and, and all of you I think remember going to Mai Chau and sleeping as a group on a house on stilts. I think we did that in 2006 and 2012 um, and 2017. Um, and then this particular trip, we went then to Hue. Uh, in 2012, we, we went uh, to essentially this wonderful pagoda inside a mountain, right? Uh, but we didn't do that trip. And then I think in the 2006 trip, we went to Halong Bay. Um, so there were some variations there. Da Nang mainly is a stopover to see the Cham Museum. Hoi An is a charming town, which has gotten a lot less charming as it's gotten a lot more popular and the Chinese tourist have invaded. Attraction. It is a giant tourist attraction today. It has expanded onto two other islands. So it's a much bigger place than many of you would remember. Uh, and then we, we went to Ho Chi Minh City, um, which District 1 is actually still known as Saigon, and then went down to the Mekong Delta and did a farm stay. So. Um, that farm stay experience is really, really different. Uh, Stu Einstein might remember his sleeping in a hammock right off the river, one of the tributaries of the river. Um, nowadays, we go to this farm stay, which is much more elaborate. And Uchin, who was our, our tourist uh, agent at the time, has now become quite an entrepreneur. She's got, oh, dozens and dozens of boats that she, uh, she rents out and so on. Uh, so it's a very, very different experience and, and far more modern. So let me stop there and turn to Ellen and Michael. Um, and, you know, we could ask, you know, some simple questions, which might be, you know, what are the most memorable parts of the trip? Which are the ones that stand out for you? And then we might also then hear from other people from uh, both the 2017 trip and then uh, the, uh, the earlier trips. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, First of all, how fabulous to be able to see everybody and to be able to remember what a wonderful trip it was. We talk about it often and it was very much a highlight in many, many trips that we've taken. Yeah, the, the stilts was incredible, climbing up those steps and sleeping under under mosquito netting on a piece of nothing. <laughs> I think we all <laughs> it was actually, right? 
and listening to the roosters and looking outside and seeing the rice paddies of the morning. It was quite an experience. And I, Michael had an extra piece that went on in the middle of the night, he'll tell you about. But we have found the people to be so charming in the whole country. And I said to Jack the other day, I think one of the reasons is in the Northern part, they are thrilled to as Americans to be able to say, well, we defeated you. And then in the South, they're thrilled to have us because we were their allies. And so they're very grateful for all of that. So everybody's happy to see us, which is lovely. <laughs> and the, the highlights, I could go on and on. The food, the people, the bicycles, the scenery, the tall buildings that don't seem to belong there anymore or shouldn't be there because there's this wonderful old architecture, which is so fabulous. But cow dye, um, I'm going to let Michael talk because otherwise I'll use up all my time. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting, the, 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 the dichotomy between uh, the north and the south and the south between 2000 and, and 2018, much, much different. But the interesting thing, sleeping at night with Jack on stilts was very interesting, it was very noisy. So I had a very interesting experience. I got up and I just climbed down the ladder and I was sitting there and the, our hosts had a, a, had a room downstairs and they, they kept coming out and be very concerned about me. I said, no, no, it's fine, I'm up. Well, you know, I said, no, I don't wanna to go to sleep. Well, they came out of their bedroom, changed the sheets, and gave me the bed, i.e. a mattress on the floor, and I couldn't refuse it. And it was very, very, very charming. In fact, during the day, it, the older the older parts, the things that hadn't changed, and I don't know when Jack was there first, it was, it was, it was, it's where the animals slept, and very, but the rural part of the trip was very good. The Mekong, and, and we ended, we started with a bed in the north, and we ended a bed in the south. Boy. Wood. Slab of wood. She, the woman was very entrepreneurial, Jack, but boy, a four by eight, pieces of plywood was a little hard. She saved her money for boats, not for mattresses. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But the, uh, go ahead, I guess that's enough of, uh, for an overview. But uh, I, I think the highlight in the South for me though, was cow dye. I can go there anytime and I thought it was very engaging. It was still engaging and uh, it's still a place I'd love to go back and see. Yeah, did you want to say something? The cow dye is what he's talking about with the uh, the temple. With just looking at it visually, was so yeah. incredible with the different colors that the different groups wore. I would probably like. So I keep saying I'm going to come back and learn more about it, and I haven't done that yet. But that's it's still on my list. Yeah. I would like to know more about that religion. Jack, put up. Put, put, you have a picture you can put up in that. Uh, I'm going to go through the slides, and we'll get to that. Um, okay. Certainly. I'll, I'll get back on it, Ben. Go ahead. I'm, All right, you go on. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, um, so um, it, I, I can't, again, I'm marveling as I go through uh, the pictures of you all who's on board there. Uh, Carol Brotman White is the only alum I have ever lost. Um, and uh, Carol, you might remember that uh, that was over at the, <laughs> over at the, the Chinese market, right? Uh, where, where Carol, I, I think, was going to go take some pictures. And, but she found the bus. Uh, I was on the bus while you were looking for me in the market. I just forgot to s wait outside the market. <laughs> and I'm just saying that it's just so wonderful to see uh, people who, who we've traveled with. So uh, I don't know whether Bill and Susan have any recollections. They traveled in 2012. And, and what were the high points of Vietnam for you all? Lisa, the view options are next to the green. Uh, we were on the oh, 2017 on people. Trip. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. You were on 2017. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what, what, uh, what were some of the highlights for people? Thank you. Wow. Gosh, the uh, sleeping in the house on stilts and waking up to rice paddy work and stuff. Uh, the uh, uh, Touring ha uh, Hanoi Harbor was interesting too uh what was the name of that how long how long the bay, the bay. Uh, not having our our uh, bags for two days two and a half that was yeah, fun yeah, too that was, that was a thrill one of the things you mentioned just a moment ago about uh cow dye i came back and was talking about that at church and uh, a couple we know well uh, their son married a cow dye woman in that temple. Wow. <laughs> so we've got friends who, who were part of a wedding in, in that building. Huh. That must so be interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
gone ahead and skipped a lot of slides just so we can show the cow dye temple and what it looks like inside. Yeah. I know that Marissa and Sarah have visited here because it's it's a regular part of our uh, our trip around Ho Chi Minh City uh, and the yeah. outer areas. That's it. And it's, it's pretty extraordinary. If I may interject, the cow dye temple, uh, they're all the same. Otherwise, it's not like going to a church that are different. Every one is the same, maybe bigger or smaller. The inside. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Uh, Jack, uh, the inside, this is a, uh, they, they pray twice a day. Those are congregants in white. The religion is uh, practiced by about three and a half million people in uh, Vietnam. It's a compilation between Catholicism, uh, Islam, and uh, good, their own. And if Jack has a, uh, Jack has another picture there. In the middle, which you can see here, is the, uh, is the, there's a, uh, a world. There's a big, uh, um, globe yeah. hanging from the ceiling, and they believe, uh, and they believe in somebody watching them. It's the eye. If you take out a dollar bill, and you'll see the same pyramid with the eye in it, because that's what's hanging from there. From our U.S. dollar bill has the same figure that's on their ceiling, and they have a regular. Their, their priesthood is a reflection of the Catholicism, the Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a pope. And so on and so forth. And, and in front of all these nice congregants are, is the uh, the uh, pr uh, the uh, priesthood comes out in all different colors, and it's quite a big pageant to look at. It appears he's been studying when I thought I was going to. Okay, listening, good. listening. Go ahead. I, 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 absolutely, Michael. My goodness. Well, you know, uh, Victor Hugo is one of the saints of cow dye, so um, Churchill as well. Huh. And Churchill. It's very unusual. You see, I'm going to go back up uh, to a previous slide, if I can get there. Marissa, what was it like to be a student? Um, I had an amazing time. I talk about Vietnam on a daily basis. I fell in love with the country off of what you guys were saying. The people there are just extremely incredible and super welcoming. And I'm glad a lot of you guys started talking about the Cao Dai Temple because that was a place that I loved. It was my favorite place throughout the country. And it was just amazing. And like, I know this is a sidestep, but Lana, I'm so happy to see your face here because you helped us all throughout our trip in Vietnam. And it was amazing. You helped me switch from like three different internships until I found the one that I wanted. But the country is amazing. And I agree with what you said about um, Hoi An, because I thought it was great while we were there, but it was probably my least favorite place just because it was the mo most packed with tourists. But as a student, I just found the people extremely helpful, like being able to go up to them on the streets and practice Vietnamese and like them giving like, a big smile because they were so happy we were taking the time to learn their language was a feeling that like I have never felt anywhere else. And it was just incredible. And I can't wait to go back. Wow. Sarah, what about you? Um, so it was, a, it was interesting for me. I was there back in 2002 in the spring. So um, it's been a while. <laughs> um, but I think the, the thing that surprised me the most was people would come up to us and ask us, where are you from? And we would say the United States. And they would say, oh, I'm so sorry. And they would be, they would feel for us because they wanted to know if we were close to New York, which obviously we, most of us were. And so it just was such an interesting, um, I guess it would, the interactions were so different than what I had expected because they were saying to me, I'm so sorry, are you okay? Is your family all right? And it was just not, not what I expected um, from a country that, my mom was not always so thrilled that I was going to go the first time I told her. She was a little nervous. Um, so it just, it was really, it was amazing. The people were just incredibly nice, incredibly hospitable. Um, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that um, I wanted to show on the slide um, was something you've all experienced, certainly, which is the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum. And one of the, um, all of you have remember having to walk around Ho's body with your hands at your sides and no photos and no speaking. No chewing gum. No chewing gum. Uh, they still are shipping Ho out to get stuffed periodically. The 2017 group, and there's yeah. Bill and Susan um, um, uh, and Wendy. It's just so good to see everybody. 
um, had the opportunity, you can see on the slide on, on my right, to lay a reef, the, the, to be the earliest visitors of a particular morning and to lay a reef at the mausoleum and then get escorted into see Uncle Ho by the Vietnamese honor guard. Um, so that was quite an experience, and I'm sure some of you have memories uh, memories of that. That was, I think, our our first real day there. Um, we went over there. This is uh, this is uh, the big square, Bouting Square, and this is um, uh, where Ho actually declared independence of the country. Um, I would ask Mark and Lana to talk a little bit about um, their trip and Lana, especially how you conceptualize and help organize the Vietnam program that we offer up every year. Are you guys there? I don't know. If Is she muted? Mark and Lana? They're, they're, they're here. They're here, okay. She didn't mute it. Right. Mark, I hear you, I think. You, yeah, let's see. Can you hear me now? Oh, there we yes. Go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I wanted to start with a, a story about Hoi An. Um, Jack introduced me to Vietnam in 2001 trip. It was a faculty development trip. We were trolling for future faculty directors. And um, we went to Hoi An. And of course, the thing you have to do in Hoi An is have a, a suit made, a clothing item made. So I was with um, David Ost and Jeremy Geller. We're walking through Hoi An, and the hawkers were getting us into the shop and we went in one and, and both of those guys wanted to have suits made and they were gonna be $20 each. And David Ost, had, political science professor, had the great line of the day, which was, for 20 bucks, how can you go wrong? <laughs> well, that evening, Jeremy and David showed up at dinner with their new suits on, and like one sleeve was about three inches longer than the other. There were four buttons, but only three button holes. And, uh, and David walked in and he said, this is how you go wrong for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has changed a bit since then, that's for sure. But. Uh, um, Lana can tell you about the organizational issues. Um, she's been doing yeoman service for six or seven years now, I think. And um, she's a real favorite with the students because she's sort of their in-place mother, their, the den mother, they call her. So um, it's, uh, it, we, you know, from 2001 until the current time, we've seen a lot of changes uh, in Vietnam. She was just back there in, February, uh, her father was in bad shape and she went to see him and she got the last plane out before they stopped uh, uh, sending planes out. And actually yesterday, that was in the Vietnam news, they hadn't had a case in over a week. Uh, so it's about the safest place in Asia right now. Yep, yep. I should mention that while David and, uh, and Jeremy came back with suits, Mark eventually came back with a wife. Well, there you go. <laughs> I did okay. I'm not so. <laughs> so, so I take I take mild credit for this, having brought Mark to Vietnam uh, the first time. So uh, very very. I'll, I'll remember you in my will, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there's a couple of uh, paintings you've done that would I can give you a list. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Somebody else want to jump in? Be polite. Anybody have questions? Let's talk, Let's talk about how great the food was. Yeah. It was wonderful. Well, I well, we I just, I'm going to run through, well, I'm gonna run through the slides because we're going to run out of time. Um, many, all of you have gone, if you've traveled to Vietnam, either as a student or as an alum, to um, the Coochie Tunnels. And um, the Coochie Tunnels to me is, um, on the one hand, um, a, a testament to the endurance of the Vietnamese and to their cleverness. And it is probably the cruelest place for Americans to go um, for, for two reasons. One is the Vietnamese were very, very smart about creating traps. 
And so you really do get the sense and with deep empathy of the pain that American soldiers um, had, were going through. Um, and then they show you this propaganda film, um, which, is, um, which is just terribly upsetting, I think, um, uh, about the, the, essentially the Vietnamese feelings about Americans, um, at least as the film pr proposes those feelings. Um, Ho Chi Minh said that, in fact, it was thought that the Vietnamese should not hate Americans, but hate the government uh, of the United States. Um, a very important distinction. And we need to remember that Ho Chi Minh, uh, after, um, after the French actually wrote Truman and asked that Vietnam become a U.S. protector or territory, uh, because he really didn't want to fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. Um, we didn't respond to him, um, and it was, I think, a great tragedy that led to this, this rather remarkable history. But I wanted to start with these two because we often think of Vietnam through the war. Um, now we're well out, you know, you know decades upon decades. Um, but it is still there. It is still present. I remember, Mark, when, when we went, you and I think some other folks went off to fire uh, rifles yes, right, at Kuchi, right? Yeah. So, Coochie's a little bit of an amusement park now. Yeah. Mark? You know, Jack, Jack they changed the uh, film at Coochie to be somewhat less um, um, anti-American. And the same is true for the film that they show at Me Lai. Now it's a little more politically correct. Yeah, Mark, you remember when you went through the tunnels in 2002? I remember going through it. was a whole different experience than Helen uh, did uh, on the trip. Very narrow. Yeah, yeah, and of course they've been enlarged for tourists. They were much smaller oh. during the war. Yeah, and I've got Bill Zupan coming out of the uh, tunnel on the right. Yeah, and I, I don't go into the tunnels because I have a Winnie the Pooh fear that I'll get stuck and won't be allowed to eat for weeks. <laughs> you know what? It might be interesting to hear from Craig Otten. I, I they're yeah. here because he went back. He fought there, and then. I think was a little concerned or apprehensive about going on this trip, and I, I remember that he enjoyed it. So, Craig, can you talk about it a little bit? Let me let me just position this a minute. Craig, besides being a little hesitant going on a trip, in certain areas he had lucid memories of when he was there and what happened. And uh, go ahead, Craig. And by the way, Felicia, you can pop in. They were on. I don't see them now. Do you have your mic open? Well, we were put on the spot a little bit. So, are you all are you all Craig and Felice willing to talk about your experience, especially at Coochie? Craig. We can't hear you. Well, we'll come back. Jack. Yep, we'll come Jack, back. Jack, it's Stu. Oh, Stu. Jack, can you hear? Yep. I got on late because of technical difficulties, but uh, I'm, I'm here now, so maybe I can tie into okay. this part of the conversation too. <laughs> sure, sure. Stu served in the war, uh, and I think had some reservations about going back. He went in 2006. We so, wanted new memories, is that right? Yep, all? and wanted new memories, yeah. so that's why. So um, talk yeah, I mean, Kuchi was by far in 2006 the most disconcerting part of the trip, uh, just because it was really the only place that anybody got in our faces about what had happened there before. Um, I, my experience with that was sort of tempered because on our way there, after we visited the Kaldai Temple, uh, Jack took us to lunch at a restaurant owned by a woman who was a high-ranking Viet Cong and to this day is still celebrated for her exploits um, with the Viet Cong. And she and I sat there and chatted about our war while her people and my people tried very hard to kill each other while I held her nine month old granddaughter on my lap. And it was a, uh, a very surreal experience in reconciliation. Did you go to the museum in uh, in Hanoi, the uh, the uh, one that shows the the war museum? The war museum? Uh, I thought that was another in your face. Uh, yes, very strong. Yeah, uh, that, that was in your face. Uh, 
Hanoi in or? Hanoi. I did not go in the Hanoi Hilton. I just uh, oh. decided I'd wander around and shoot some pictures other places while that was going on. Vietnam, like even like Israel, the same way in Jerusalem, they changed the history to meet the times. And from uh, 2000, we were there in 1999 to 2017. Big change in, in those locations, the ones that were in your face to smooth out the edges and. Uh, so it gave it a whole different look, you know. I don't know. I think yeah. part of the in your face experience is the reality of what happened. And in that regard, it's important to see Agent Orange affected our own people, not just the Vietnamese. It was yeah. a horrible, horrible chemical. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I receive monthly payments from the VA for uh, effects of my exposure to it. And I, in a search online one day, I happened to find maps showing Agent Orange runs during each month of each year. And the one month I was on a uh, land clearing operation where obviously they didn't want the trees to have any foliage on them, I mean, the number of runs per day during that month were just unbelievable. So if, if I didn't get it anywhere else, I certainly got a good dose of it there. You know, one of the things that I remember from the tunnels when we went the first time was how incredibly efficient they were with everything that they needed. And they talked about the cooking in the kitchen and how there were little outlets for the steam to just come up through and it wouldn't be in large amounts so that when the the planes were flying overhead, they would not be able to spot, to spot it. And there were little wafts of steam that were coming up in various places so that it would not give the sense that, oh my goodness, what's going on underneath? Very clever, very smart. The hospital there too. They, they had an entrance to the river, from the tunnel into the river to go swimming and then come back in through the river into the tunnel. Very so, so. So that nowadays, the most dangerous thing that Americans experience in, in Vietnam is the traffic. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's worse than other cars. Those of you who went in 2006, those of you who went back in the 90s, um, you know, yet we had bicycles at and the very motorbikes. beginning and motorbikes. Uh, and the bicyclists and motorbike folks would follow the school of fish method of driving where they would simply go around you. And so they, you would encourage people just to step out and the motorcycles and the, and the, uh, the bikes would take care of themselves. Yeah. Nowadays with cars, the the clearly Jack, because yeah. I was almost hit by one of them. She, she looked to the right, she looked to the right, looked to the left, no, but boy, when she put the step down and motorcycle came right, wow, at, her. right at me. The interesting thing, <laughs> the trust, you walked in the middle of the street, hand in hand, they walked and it was like, the, just like the stream opened up and, and the motorcycles, cars and bicycles went around them. I still don't believe it. Yeah, but, but I walked next to somebody who was Vietnamese every time. I figured they would, <laughs> they knew what to do. So. <laughs> On the other hand, they wouldn't dare kill a foreigner, so. Yeah, well, they, oh, well, who knows? <laughs> Maybe you get that point. Jack, there were six, six <laughs> traffic lights in Hanoi. Six traffic lights only in Hanoi. The first yeah. time. Yeah. The first time. And None that, of them were obeyed. Oh, that's great. Wow. This, is the, this is the view that the 2017 group had. Tet was on its way. Yeah. And of course, Western uh, just ended. Um, and so this is one of the large streets and it was packed. Yep. And it probably took us a half hour to just go through blocks. Yeah. And it was pretty startling. So again, traffic is, is certainly a presence. Um, let me... Um, and just talk about places. You know, Hanoi, what we've experienced um, in the many years now, uh, the two dozen or more years that we've gone to Vietnam, uh, is a place now of just enormous prosperity. Um, and yet it remains this beautiful, charming um, uh, Asian city uh, with a strong French colonial influence. Uh, and so again, uh, many of you have, have memories of this. For those who went in 2006, very hard to see that left side. There just was not a lot of prosperity back in 2006. And Sarah, when you were there in 2002, I mean, the streets were pretty, pretty bare. Yeah. So um, it's startling today to see how prosperous uh, Vietnam is. So and busy again, around the lake. In, in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Jack, Michael? The, the lake that you had the picture on, it was so busy when we were there, you couldn't walk. 
and yet in 2000, thereabouts, it was very empty. It was gorgeous. Right. You know, well, Jack, that same theme of, um, of progress, I guess you could call it that, um, when we were there in 2005, it was still motorbike, bicycles, and a few cars, and mostly delivery trucks. Uh, when we were there, I went over to, with Lana in 2017, and I was sitting in a Starbucks on the corner of one of the major streets for about an hour, nursing a cup of coffee, and I saw two Rolls Royce and a Bentley go by within an hour. <laughs> Just amazing the wealth that's poured into that country. Yeah. It still goes to a few people, but still it's amazing the change. It is, it is. So again, one of the themes uh, was um, this business of, uh, of the Confucian, uh, you know, very Confucian world. And there's certainly a lot of places where tourists can go to see. This again is the Temple of Literature. I just find it fascinating that, that uh, the monks must really like choco pies because you see them all the time. Well, the ancestors first have their first shot at the choco pies, but then, uh, then the monks get, uh, get what's left. And then, of course, this strong French colonial influence, and I just hit the wrong key, there we go, uh, this French colonial influence. Deb and I were there back in 1995 or 96, 96. when the cathedral first reopened. And it was um, around Christmas time, and um, people flocked to see what was inside the cathedral, um, and uh, were literally in the rafters. So um, you have this wonderful landscape of these French ochre-painted you know, buildings, the, Viet the Vietnamese were smart enough not to tear them down. It was kind of like, oh, they're ours now. Um, and yet also this, this wonderful Confucian, um, Asian, uh, and I, I would argue that Vietnam has, the, has some of the strangest domestic architecture, right, based on the old frontage rule, which meant that you had very narrow houses that went up quite a bit. You know, so that's an pay, unusual aspect you of- You had to pay uh, taxes on your street frontage, but right. not- how your building was. It's like right. it was in China. It was the um, width of your property that you got taxed on, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there were so, the, the so, rice patties. <laughs> yeah, so this is what Alan was talking about, the rice patties in my show. And um, when we do these trips, it's important because Vietnam still is primarily an agricultural and rural society. It shifted tremendously. It used to be well over 90% agricultural. Now it's down below 80% agricultural. Um, so um, one of the things we want to do is make sure we get out to the rural, what the Vietnamese call the rural countryside, right, um, to experience what life is like out there. And this, is, this was the view from the house on stilts. And this is the house on stilts where Michael abandoned us <laughs> to go downstairs and sleep with the family. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in that wonderful village because then there it is. Okay, I'm walking around. The roosters were all over the streets. And I must say, I think the scarf on my left is the one that I bought. And I have a number of those. Um, yeah, we do have to talk about shopping. It was fun. We had a good time with it. As I said to Jack <laughs> before, I'm wearing my earrings from Vietnam right now. So it was cool. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah. And the roosters owned the streets. They just wandered around and it was it was free range. I guess maybe that's even cost more now. Yeah, my, Michael that evening didn't sleep too well. I think somebody was snoring. And when I went, to, so therefore everybody went off the following day. I stayed in the village and I, I meandered around. I tried to ride a bicycle uh -huh. in the uh, paddies. It, it was too narrow and it was difficult for me to ride. So I came back and I was sitting around and I see people cooking. I sat down and I started breaking uh, uh, taking apart beans and taking, doing different things. And I was worried about the, the language, but we did very well for a couple hours. We had a lot of fun. So uh, that's a part that uh, I remember. And I think when we talk about change, uh, we see it in the big cities, but you go rurally, you see a piece of the countryside that's still probably very similar to what it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And, to, and I think, Jack, that's the most important thing. It, it's not so much the change to see if we, if we go again, see more about the roots. And uh, this is obviously in the roots and also in the South, in the Mekong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, well, hi, this is Henry here uh, in Los Angeles. Um, so is there tentative plans for another another trip? Going back. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. I have to clear this with Chevy. Uh, Deb and I have in mind to do another Vietnam alumni trip. We also would love to take alums to Cuba. 
And, and we had a wonderful experience with what we called the road less traveled in Italy, which was Calabria and Sicily. Yes. And yes. so I'm, I'm, you know, I think we're very eager to return to Vietnam with alums uh, and then perhaps uh, do some of these other locations. Right. What we've got going is very, very special. Pat McGuire's, uh, you know, he and Sandy taking people to Ireland. It's a wonderful trip, right? Um, you know, we're just very, very fortunate to have faculty who can take folks um, to, to these places that they know very, very well and that you, you know, really aim to get an insider view. I think this is, the, this is what makes what Mark's done and what so many other faculty that, that have gone to Vietnam is that they take students to try to see the country from the inside out rather than from the outside in um, and our being able to be there with alums even for two to three weeks allows us to do that and we have folks meet a lot of vietnamese uh, and have lunches and dinners with vietnamese for example so yes the guy we're ready you know, Jack, um, who had along to, with us were certainly wonderful as well. So kudos to all of you. Jack, let me put in a plug for uh, one of Lana's trips. Uh, last couple of years, she's done Vietnam and Cambodia or Vietnam and Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And Bhutan is hard to get to and, and uh, the hermit kingdom, they call it. But it's a phenomenal version of Vietnam 50, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that. That'd be great. So I'm going to continue here. I think we've got a couple of chat questions. Go ahead. Could I could I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I want you just mentioned uh, having meals in people's houses. And I was about to say that was one of my favorite things. Uh, all of them were nice. There was uh, one at the beginning of the trip, but the one I think I appreciated the most was when the uh, lady's husband took us there by boat, and we we landed in front of the house and yes. and had a wonderful luncheon. Uh, there were some other experiences that have to do with food. Uh, nobody's mentioned eating snake. <laughs> And I remember Jack telling me, you're a good sport because you ate snake. <laughs> and uh, there was another one where we had to cook our own food at the table. I think that was a luncheon. Yep. And uh, one last thing I want to say is that I loved all the boat trips, uh, especially in the Perfume River. Yes. Um, went back the second time at night and uh, had little uh, wish boats that we put over the side that, that were lighted. So some of those experiences were just wonderful. Jack, this is Maureen. Um, Stu and I had Stu and I had an experience that crossed two trips that um, I want to remind you about. He had gone on the 2006 trip, right, Stu? Yes. Yeah. And he had met two young monks that were, well, studying to be monks. They weren't yet monks. They were probably about 12 years old. I have a picture of me with them, as a matter okay. of fact. And when he heard that I was going on the trip in 2017, he sent me the picture and said, if, if you go to the, same, to the school, the same place, see if you can find them. And um, I brought the picture that Stu had of them from 10 years before uh, and found one of them. The, the young students got all excited. They recognized one of them and they went running off to find the, uh, the student that had been in the original picture. Um, he, was, he had just been, I don't know what the right word is, but, or, but ordained as a monk. He had just finished his studies and now was a monk. So it's a lot of fun to be able to let Stu know that we had found one of the students. That is a marvelous, I remember that. And, and uh, that was such a thrill that we went to the Bukmai uh, Temple, uh, the pagoda up in, uh, off the Hui River and, mm -hmm. and you found this person. You yep. know, you know we, we call Stu the happy Buddha for a reason. <laughs> and uh, I think that probably made him very, very happy. 
Um, if you take a look at this picture also, um, again, many of you got to go to the princess's house, right, where we got that wonderful Huey meal and we had a nice lecture by the, uh, the former historian of the Citadel. So that's one of the pictures there. And then you can see Ellen, uh, as you say, Ruth, about to launch uh, one, of the, uh, one of the little candles out on the Perfume River in Huey. So uh, again, very, very memorable. And I, we're trying to, I'm trying to get to food. Um, these are just kind of chronological views of, of landscapes that we've experienced this out, outside of the Hotel Continental. I Which think- still has the best buffet for morning. They have the best seen. breakfast buffet, yeah. And of course, we're looking down Dumcoy Street here and then across uh, the little park to the Opera House. Where's all the traffic? And uh, well, where's all the traffic? And then uh, Michael took a picture. They were, there was a Tet uh, a Dragon uh, troupe that was practicing outside of the Opera House. Uh, so I, some of you might have, one or more of you might have stayed in Graham Greene's room um, at the Continental. You would remember uh, it, it had a post right in the yeah. middle of the room. You yep. have to be careful you, not to walk in. You guys stayed there on our trip because I posed with my copy of, uh, of his book <laughs> at your room. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yep, American. absolutely. Um, you were just mentioning the, the Snake Village lunch, and um, yes. <laughs> there we have Craig and, and, and John watching as they um, essentially bled the snake. And then over on the right, um, the, the three amigos, uh, we had three snakes, we had three beating hearts. And so we were about to toast the, uh, the eating or the drinking, if you will, of the beating hearts of the snake. Sam, I remember John got bled afterwards. What's that, Michael? John got bled afterwards. He had his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there is food. The markets. So back to oh. back to Ellen's point, and uh, some fresh of you. Fresh vegetables and fruit. Oh, amazing! Yeah, we went to the market and we bought the things that, and then we went on to the cooking class, and then we cooked it. But. Yep. Gorgeous. Look at it. It's wonderful. This, uh, this Goyon cooking school separated the men and separated the women yeah. and took, took us out uh, uh, to go shopping. So I only have photos from where I was, which was with the guys. Um, and this, this young woman was unbelievably animated uh, and so enthusiastic yeah, that we were very, very excited. The woman in pink there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and of course, what we're seeing again, and Mark mentioned this, the prosperity, it's the bounty. Right, that 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 exists in this this society, this agricultural society, is just pretty extraordinary. Um, here we are at the cooking uh, school. Uh, back in 2006, I think we actually went. Uh, Stu, maybe you can remember Miss V. We went to Miss V's, and uh, actually, when she came out with her memoir cookbook, I ordered a copy and asked for her to sign it before it was sent and sent her a picture of our experience there. <laughs> yeah. So I think the, the food and the cooking has always been a highlight for us. It's very, very convivial. And I think we get an appreciation for, um, for the Vietnamese, uh, for, for Vietnamese cooking. Uh, uh, Chris Anir and I wrote a paper that was published a year and a half ago or so on Vietnamese cuisine. Happy to send you, it's electronic, electronic copy. Uh, it's published in the Asian Network Exchange Journal. Um, about uh, whether there is or is not a Vietnamese national cuisine. I have now on to shopping, right? We would have to ask, did you buy something special while you were in Vietnam? And there's Margarita Ramos with this pretty extraordinary saleswoman. It's kind of like, we're not gonna bargain much anymore. Society it used to be kind of free market, you know, capitalism like crazy, you could bargain for everything. Nowadays, especially the high-end embroidery, there's Felice and Craig with a beautiful uh, piece of embroidery that they purchased. Uh, so what, what were the things that you bought that were not merely souvenirs? I always like to say, after you come back, you could set up a, a website called Tchotchkes R Us, right? And, and just sell <laughs> souvenirs, but things that mattered, things that you have kept. You know, um, Deb, for example, um, one of our Vietnamese daughters, mothers always would buy her an Aozai when we, when we went to Vietnam and so, one of the latter trips, she said, let's go out shopping. And Deb said, oh, my goodness gracious, I, I already have so many outsides. They couldn't, they couldn't really afford it, but you don't want to turn down the, the act of generosity. 
And the husband piped up, well, you have six, there are seven days. In a week. <laughs> so, well, um, oh, um, I don't know. Go ahead. Jack, um, I will say when I was there, I had a really cool internship um, at the United Nations School between the United Nations School and West Street Elementary in Geneva, New York. And so everything I brought back um, was either from the United Nations School or it was from things that I picked up in Hanoi. So I have eyes and shoes and all sorts of things that I was able to bring back. And I did a couple lessons for um, the students in Geneva. So while some things are tchotchkes and I still have them, they were ultimately for teaching purposes, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's of course. right off. You know, uh, I think, Sarah, that was the bridge program that we ran for so many it, years. It was, yes. I had, um, I was the only student who had a computer. I had a digital camera. Um, it was a really interesting and very cool experience. Did we got, uh, besides was Ellen. Yeah, there? it was a marvelous program. Oh, it was. A hand well, hand. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen is showing us that they, they are out in, in Tarzan. On the airplane. She goes outside wearing her Vietnamese hat. My rice paper hat, which I must tell you I did wear because it really is very light and it does keep the sun hat. It's kind of cool. And I'm wearing my earrings. And the other thing that I showed was the, the front of the picture that was on the airlines. Again, nice. working with kids, I have to show them, but it was the year of the rooster. And what it cost me, probably nothing, because it was on the front seat. But it's a fabulous picture. And these are the things that I always bring back. So, you know, special for me. And we have one well, other, we have- I have um, a year of the cat, speaking a year of the- Yes. Because they don't have, what was it that they didn't have, Jack? A rabbit? They didn't have a year of the rabbit. So instead they had a year of the cat. Oh. And I bought this from, her name was Suzanne in Hanoi, who was out on the outskirts, an artist that Jack and Deb knew. Yes, Suzanne Hecht. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very special. It hangs in my front hall. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Fantastic. Well, we're about we're we're about about another five minutes. So, and just in terms of the slides, you know, this is for those of you who went in two thousand six and two thousand twelve. Um, you didn't get this kind of deluxe farm stay experience with Utkin, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and she has really stepped it up. Um, and you know, she she loves our students. I think. Um, uh, Marissa, you probably stayed there. I think L Lana, you probably arranged to have him stay over here, right? Um, and uh, it's just a lot yeah. of fun. We get bicycles. We go on all these paths. Uh, sometimes we we with the students do a school visit. Um, so just lots of fun. And then I thought I would just end with probably one of the the most iconic pictures um, of uh, kind of typical Vietnamese agricultural life, and then just to finish up just to open it up to the group maybe michael ellen might have some things to say or anyone else i see I the gilmans are on i have a wonderful picture uh, a wonderful picture of the gilman if i can come up with it uh, here well let's you look, see there we are yeah, there we go you know it's interesting ellen and i have two rules when we travel we don't go back when we drive and we don't bring home anything we can't carry and this is a stone a stone vessel one piece for Vietnam and yeah, as is my hat, one piece. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I think uh, we just have to remind everybody listening what a wonderful trip it was. I don't have to remind you, but again, kudos to you, Jack, for organizing it, for all the guys who helped you, for the women who helped find the places. Deb, I know you have a big influence, and every trip we've taken with you, we've enjoyed, and we're looking forward to some more. And, uh, you know, and Ellen is a cop. We are too. I'd like to show a, a dress that I brought there, handmade. Uh-huh. Can you see? I don't, I don't know. Yep. You know, Ruth, I have such fond memories of our traveling together, right? Um, and I remember, you know, just all the special things we did. Uh, many of the trips afterwards, we haven't walked, for example, Marble Mountain and gone into the caves. 
uh, in uh -huh. the way that we did in 2006. That was just so special. Uh, and uh, Mark has got some gorgeous photographs that he took um, of those Marble Mountain caves. So um, I remember our 2006 trip well. There were only 10 of us, and uh, it, was, uh, it was just a wonderful time. And yeah, are you still wearing that dress? Yes. <laughs> I remember when... Ruth... My dress hasn't changed very much. Well, this is a good story. <laughs> Ruth was speaking quietly to herself in, in the lobby of one of the hotels we were staying at. And Jack went up to talk to her to find out how her night had been. And she said, I'm talking to myself. Don't interrupt. That <laughs> 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 was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Others, there's Carol Brotman White with Deb. Somewhere here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, again, if there's any other remarks people would like to make, um, we de definitely want to have a trip. We definitely want to go ahead and uh, you know get to get to Vietnam again with a group. There we go. Oh, here it's my dress. Ah, nice. nice. You know, Jack and Deb. We want to join the you know an upcoming trip when the, all the quarantine is over. It it was a a super trip. Um, I bought a um, Vietnamese knife and I use it all the time when I'm cooking. I appreciated an insider's view. Uh, which Jack and Deb do so well. Thank you. I think it, one of my our concluding remarks would be is we never travel with people in the group. We go travel by ourselves. The interesting thing is, is traveling with the group from school is at least we have a basis. We have a basis of, uh, of where we came from and the groups have been terrific. And the, imagine, the imagination of the group is, is easy to, to form and the leadership of Jack and Deb you do a good job, so I think it, it's it's you, know, you get kudos for, okay. for keep it going. Well, I see Chris. Good night, see Chris Hatch on. Chris uh, Chris does programs to Bali with students, uh, and they've been typically short term programs. So they'd be Chevy. I'm I'm advertising now. <laughs> location and he's got the timing down right um, for an alumni trip. To Bali. Well, Jack, no joke. I uh, I wanted to be here just to learn <laughs> from you and learn some tips, actually. <laughs> New Hampshire people. Oh, there the islands off. Yeah. Oops. So we're we're eager to go again. Um, again, it's this is such a special kind of reunion for some of you, you that have traveled with us in the past. Um, <laughs> are there any other? Uh, uh, I'm watching the clock, Chevy. Uh, any other remarks or any questions uh, that oh. anyone? I was just thinking about the reunion at your house, where we do? <laughs> made the uh, egg rolls again. Well, yeah. Yeah. well you know, we have had, uh, we've been very fortunate, we've had um, two very special Vietnamese William Smith students who have lived with us. Uh, Ling um, Nguyen is now mm -hmm. uh, the director of the Cal State Fullerton Vietnamese Studies Program. And uh, Cha Cha Ta is um, a graphic designer and very, very successful, US a, a U.S. citizen married to uh, Dale Watkins, who's an alum, uh, oh, wow. who, who went to Hobart and went to Vietnam, of and course. And learned Vietnamese. Yep. So, uh, and we've had, uh, I think now, seven Fulbrights to Vietnam, um, starting way back with Oliver Meeker, Christina Bain, uh, so on and so forth. We just had a, a wonderful young man. Rissa knows him well. Uh, Brandon, who has, has gotten a Fulbright to Vietnam on the, te the teaching side. So we, uh, Vietnam's been very, very important, I think, uh, in the life of the colleges yeah. and in the lives of many students. So many of them return. So many of them return. And I feel, um, with Deb, very fortunate to have been able to bring so many alums uh, to have the experience of Vietnam, because uh, it's a pretty extraordinary place. Jack, I will say at the um, at, at the restaurant where um, I was chatting about the war with the VC leader, Ruth was dancing with her to music from the karaoke machine. 
It's the only time I got to dance in the whole trip. <laughs> You know, I think that we've been we've been lucky um, um, to have the spontaneity of of meeting um, being with Vietnamese. Um, we have a lot of Vietnamese friends slash family now, uh, there, and uh, of course, we've cultivated the same kind of thing in Calabria and Sicily uh, with Italian friends and family. So, um, again, I think that it's just been very very special to be able to attach. Uh, a group and have the group experience lunch with or dinner with or going over to someone's home um, or a restaurant. Uh, we also went to the vegetarian restaurant in Hue in the subsequent trips to where, you know, they welcome welcome our group and uh, are very personable. So it's it's awesome. been a, you know, just a fabulous experience. I, my follow up very has happy been... to have friends. Of... Go ahead. <laughs> My, my follow-up has been uh, pursuing writings by Vietnamese authors, and uh, one of the most recent ones was a memoir written by a guy whose family fled in 1975 and settled in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which happens to be my hometown. So it's been very interesting to communicate with him. Uh, I'm a member of a family that's been there since the 1700s and as a very white family and his family was new arrivals who were not white and at a time when some people still didn't think too fondly of Vietnamese so we've had some uh, interesting exchanges about our experiences in good old Carlisle PA. Yeah, you know, there's, it's yeah the this, way is this, Ma this is Maureen. Uh, you, had, you had early in this session talked about, uh, asked to have Craig say something, and um, I think he was on mute or whatever, but I want to say it was so meaningful to have somebody there who had experienced some tough stuff during the war, and just feeling the emotion that he had as he described different situations, it, it just, for me, having... Um, been a teenager during the war and experiencing it in the United States, being able to be with somebody and hear their firsthand accounts was remarkable. So I know I didn't say it to you at the time, Craig, but it, it meant a lot to Bill and myself to um, have you share. As difficult as it was, um, much of uh, uh, some of the things you experienced. Very, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and one of the things I think Deb and I enjoy so much is, uh, no offense to the students, is traveling with adults who have some life experience and who will share their perception. Uh, and uh, that, that's, it's, it's, really, it's really special because we get to learn a lot and we're not always in the role of, of teacher or leader. Uh, and so that's a, a pretty special experience. And, and again, you're hearing, it, you're hearing it from Michael and Ellen Right, um, so many of you um, have have uh, uh, just wonderful, wonderful life experiences that you've been able to share on our trips. So I have a couple of quick questions, Diane and John. Are you in Maine or are you in Saint Croix? You're muted. How is that? Uh, we are we are in Maine. We did not get down to Saint Croix this year. Flannel. Flannel. Expecting a snowstorm. <laughs> um, Life is good. <laughs> good. We all look wonderful. It's good to see you. It's may so, I say one thing? Um, may I say one thing, uh, Jack? One food story from yes. Vietnam? Good. Well, when we got into Saigon, we were the first couple to get in, and you and Deb took us to the hotel and then said, let's have lunch. And we had lunch in this little hole of a place, just a few doors down from the ABC hotel where we were staying. And at the end of that noodle lunch, there were a bunch of guys next to us who were drinking and celebrating and, they, and you said to have a good test because Ted was coming, and they immediately brought, brought the rice liquor brought over. the rice liquor and the glasses. <laughs> and you and John drank, and they didn't offer Deb and I 
<laughs> never got over that. Never. <laughs> but we, I have it wonderful. was it was wonderful though the um the the joy that people had to yeah. to share and to see us and it was a wonderful introduction to Vietnam. One piece of advice for anybody traveling to Vietnam: <laughs> if a couple goes, be sure that you each have different credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Both take the same credit card. <laughs> you know, um, watch out for your John, passport. You're the only traveler that I've been with, student or alum, who was ever pickpocketed in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, well, you she know, was. So. She would hand out like two or three dong a day to me. She said, "That's all you get That's now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Ellen, any closing remarks? Uh, uh, Let's do it again. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. Jack, could I make just one remark, not about the trip, yes, but Susan. about Maureen, it's me, yeah, Susan. How are you doing, Maureen? <laughs> um, I, I'm reclining against a lot of pillows. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I, I had a major fall and I had a couple of big oh. surgeries that I'm yeah, covering. I'm, following. I'm, I'm ready to go back, so that well, will stop me. I'll be ready. But you know, on a lighter note, I want to know how uh, how the suit worked out at the wedding. Oh, it, no, it was funny listening to the story about how bad the other suit was. Bill has always had trouble getting suits to fit him because he has really long arms, and it was perfect. It was beautiful. <laughs> so we, we want to go back and get some more, but they weren't twenty dollars. So I remember when they were more like hundred and fifty dollars. So I can't imagine what they are now. But they were great. So Susan, yeah, Susan. Yes. Did you want to say something else? No, I was just. Oh, giving greetings to Maureen. I've been following Maureen's uh, crash and burn. Crash and burn, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so right. happy to see her here, and you know, able Thank to speak and that. everything. <laughs> Back to me, Jack. I guess so. Okay, guys, I just wanted to thank you so much. I, I don't know if you could see me. I enjoyed this thoroughly. I leaned in. I smiled. My jaw hurt so much um, from just listening and to this conversation and just watching the smiles on your faces. Um, I'm ready to, to work to get some, you know, these trips on, uh, underway. We also do work with a, another travel company that we'll de um, develop some trips with, but I think you know the faculty-led trips have a special flavor, as I can see from this conversation. And so, I just want to thank you all for joining in, for either having coffee or lunch with us, or maybe something a little lighter, maybe some rice wine, some you know somebody had or heavier <laughs> in their, in their cups. <laughs> and really, really good to see some faces that I have not seen Stu in so long, and me both with here in Geneva, um, uh, you know, and and Ruth has been on every. Uh, webinar this week and I'm, I can't wait to go visit her when this COVID-19 is behind us and meet her in person in Rochester. So again, just thank you all so much for joining us and for, uh, I hope it was a good time for you all because it definitely was for me. Jack, Deb, Ellen, Mike, thank you, thank you, thank you for saying yes. We hope this will become a bit of a series in terms of traveling during this time virtually. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Good to see you all. And, uh, thank you, Hobart William Smith, for having this. Awesome.